سره She corrects Socrates in the fourth paragraph, then who are the philosophers? You see, wisdom is one of the most beautiful things, and love is the love for the beautiful. Always watch for and of in. For of in. And love is a love for the beautiful, so love must necessarily be a philosopher, and being a philosopher is between the wise and ignorant. Right? And then he picks up the birth. So therefore, he's describing. Love as the philosopher. And in this fourth paragraph, would you agree? <clears throat> he goes back into the myth, pulls some things out of the myth. His birth is the cause of this, for he comes of a wise and resourceful father, but a mother resourceless and not wise. Right? So it picks, goes back, picks up the major theme. And the myth. Well then, dear Socrates, this is the nature of the spirit that goes back again the second paragraph, the model, love is a spirit. It's no wonder you thought love is what you thought, what you think. You thought, if I may, may, may infer it from what you say, that love was the beloved and not the lover. You got the mixed up, Socrates. You thought love was the beloved, not the lover. I have to straighten you out. You're all mixed up on that. That's why I think love seemed to you to be wholly beautiful. Now, now look here, Socrates. The thing loved, the object, the thing loved is in fact beautiful, dignity, perfect, blessed. What are the terms? The thing loved is in beautiful. fact. Beautiful, dainty, perfect, dainty, and perfect, and blessed. That's the object of love. Love as a philosopher, the philosopher is after in the pursuit of this. The loving thing has a different nature, such as I've described. Right? This is the object of love. So this is the object. What's interesting is that they say that love is beautiful in itself. To, I'm sorry, in being, to ante, yeah. which is, they don't translate it, I don't know why. It's in the low, you know, in respect to being. Well, look here. Please add it to your book.
time of the tragedy since it wasn't in Atlanta. Because that's what we're talking about, the nature of reality again. Now, would you agree that this is the way he's setting it up? Then this question is quite correct. Then of what use is he to mankind? If this describes love, and it's only in terms of the philosopher, well, there are a lot of other people other than philosophers, at least of Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Louie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. Right. Therefore, Uncle Louie. God, is that a good question? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Right. That's what you think love is. That's what love is. <laughs> what good is he for mankind, right? That's the issue, so. Now, what is meant by the love of beautiful things? Barbara, beautiful things. Beautiful things in, in Greek. There aren't any things. At there, aren't, there ain't no things. No. See? This is added. Right. It, it could, it's probably a plural. I haven't looked at it. But it's usually a plural. Okay. And, they, and it's often so, new. This is the beautiful thing. What is meant by this? What, is, what are you talking about? What is meant by this? Well, if there's no things, what do we do? I mean, how can we get some English around this? Oh. And it's really a puzzle, isn't it? Yes or no? Well, it's a puzzle. I hope so. That is big. Based on that question, though, like, well, they put it another way. This is saying love is singular and has no general significance to mankind. So, what good is he to mankind? I will try. <laughs> to teach you that next, Socrates. Yeah. Uh, I'll try. He's not a very bright kid. Uh, I'll try to teach you that next. And this is where we're going. So therefore, would you agree we need a reader? But what's the riddle, Pierre? Didn't you say we inherited a riddle? What's the riddle? Well, I... from the way in which he, she is describing love, that love, this is the kind of love of the philosopher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, she doesn't say uh, this is the kind of love as the philosopher loves. This love is mm -hmm. this. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And she's specifically mentioning the philosopher. Uh -huh. So, in that sense, this is a particular. Okay. And hence the comment of As if earlier. they're the only ones who can love, therefore. Right, okay. Yeah. Therefore, it has no general significance to my Right, right. Uncle Louie would be left out. Yes. You guys commented yes. already. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We would shed a tear over that. We would. Everyone together, yes? Yeah. So we need a reader. What about it? Sam, how about it? Love then is like that on the top of page 100, the third line down from the top. Page 108 in your book, sir. Now she's going back to the myth. Okay. Pick it up. Okay. I, I have another one of these in the car, but you could use mine if you'd like to use the same translation. Okay. I have a Yeah, book. that no, would help. The same translation. Yeah. The, uh, it's a new edition. Oh, the pagination? The guy? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Then I say, very well, madam, what you say is right. But love being such as you describe, of what use is it to mankind? I will try to teach you that next doctor, she said. Love, then, is like that and born like that. And he is love of beautiful things, as you said he is. 
Let's suppose someone should ask us, Socrates and Diotima, what is meant by love of beautiful things? I will put it more clearly. He that loves beautiful things loves what? Then I answered, to get. Still, she said, that answer means another question, like this. What will he get who gets the beautiful thing? I said I could not manage at all to answer that question offhand. Well, she said, suppose one should change beautiful to good and ask that. See here, Socrates, I will say, what does he love who loves good things? To get them. Said, said I. And what will he get who gets good things? That's easier, said I. I can answer that. I can answer that he will be happy. Then she said, by getting good things, the happy are happy. And there is no need to ask further why he who wishes to be happy does wish that. But the answer seems to be finished. Quite true, said I. <coughs> but do you think this wish and this love are common to all mankind? Right. Right? There we are. Second goal. There we go. Um, notice, um, adding to this notion that if you do achieve this goal, happy. Happiness. Quite true. But what do you think... Uh, this wish and this love is common to all mankind, but do you think it? But do you think this wish and, and this love is common to all mankind? Do you team yeah, Go ahead. Said, and do you think that all men always wish to have the good things, or what do you say? That's it. It's common to all. Why then, Socrates, said she, do we not say that all men are lovers? If they do, in fact, all love the same things, and always, instead of saying that some are lovers and some are not. Yeah, that surprises me, too. Don't let it surprise you, for we have taken one kind of love and given it the name of the whole, love. And there are other cases in which we misapply other names. Oh, yeah? For example, what? Here's one. You know that poetry is many kinds of making. For when anything passes from not being to being, the cause is always making, or poetry. So that in all the arts, the process is making. And all the craftsmen in these are makers of poets. Right, okay. Of course, as you know, the word poetry, the <coughs> H-I, means to make. Right? And uh, it doesn't have that singular meaning in English, but... Right, so, so I'll give you an example of how one term is used in a general way and also a specific way. You take poetry as an example. I thought, oh, yeah, I can see that. Quite true. But yet, there are not all, they are not all called poets. They have other names. <clears throat> and one bit of this making has been taken. That concerning music and verse. And this is called by the name of the whole. For this only is called poetry, and those who have this bit of making are called poets. Now that's true. <laughs> so with love then, in its general sense, it is all the desire for good things and for happiness. Love most mighty and all ensnaring. But those who turn to him by any other road, whether by way of making the money, or the taste for sports or philosophy are not said to be in love and are not called lovers, but only those who go after one kind and are earnest about that have the name of the whole, love, and are said to love and to be 
Yeah, I think you're right there. And how? Okay, what do you say? Look at anybody who pursues anything for them that they see as beautiful with these qualities, they're all lovers, whether it's money making or sports or anything else. Oh, they're extending the notion to cover all of mankind. Right. And in the Greek, uh, Barbara was telling me that the real word in here, let me read it for you. Uh, and if they, uh, but those who turn to him by any other name, whether by way of money making or being Republicans, or the taste for sports or philosophy. Is that is that, that is, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's some additions added. Okay, I just thought I'd add that. <laughs> now we get a nice shift. I think you're right there. <clears throat> and there's a the story, she said, that half the people in love are those who are seeking for their other half. But my story tells that love is not for a half, nor indeed the whole unless that happiness could be something good, my friend. Since men are willing to cut off their own hands and feet if their own seem to them to be nasty. For really, I think no one is pleased with his own thing except one who calls the good thing his own and his property, and the bad thing another's. Since there is nothing else men love but the good. No yes. Yes, I think you just smashed Aristophanes, Diotima. <clears throat> well, we, we may say simply that men love the good. Yes. Shall we add that they love to have the good? Yes, add that. Not only to have it, but always to have it. Add that too. Then to sum up, it is the love of having the good for oneself. Always. Wow, most true indeed. All right, now. <clears throat> um, this is the background for the, the very strange paragraph, and that's where I wanted to go on page 101, the next opening line. And <clears throat> see if we can just stay into the first four lines for a minute. So read it yourself for a minute. men are pregnant in body and soul. All right? Both, see? The outward word being in. Yeah, in. Yeah, good old in. Mm. It's all through the system. So, look, could we have two levels? Let's say all men are really, see, All men are born, the soul is pregnant. Take four. Mm -hmm. All men are pregnant, Socrates, both in body and in soul. Both body and soul. God, what a curious statement. And when they are the right age, our nature desires to beget. He's already knocked up. 
Hey, he's already knocked up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now he desires to be dead. Um, have you studied English? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know any people who speak English? By chance, what is he getting? Getting knocked up. What? Give birth. Let me make sure. Yeah, birth is that right? Beginning is not birth. I want to know. That's why I'm asking. Don't make fun of me. Well, well, I'm not. You yeah, know, I know. I was waiting for the rest of them to fall in the hole that you dug. <laughs> <laughs> See, a lot of this depends upon how you how you understand this very curious word. Begetting. In the Bible, they always they don't talk about women begetting in the Bible. They're always begetting in the Bible, isn't yeah. it? So therefore, so it's a holy all, thing. All about begetting. So what would you? So how is it? What do you see here? Begetting. Production. Is it birthing? No. In a way, but it's production. It's the to produce. It's the, what? Look here. Is it? No. See, we left out a piece here. See. See, this could be the birth thing. So look here. Where would you put beginning? B. Which one? B. A B. A. C. All right. B. B. E. Wherever you put it, watch what follows. Okay. And when they are of this, uh, they are of the right age, our nature desires to beget. But it cannot in an ugly thing only in a beautiful thing. And this business is divine. And this is something immortal in our mortal nature. Breeding and birth. Hey, breeding and birth. Breeding. Immortal. Okay. A, B, C, D. Come on. E, where? Yeah, but... Breeding. Who, who's the soul having sex with? That's what I want. I don't know. I'm just wondering. Mm. How did he get Soul man. <laughs> right. Where? I don't know. <laughs> can ask the question. Where is breeding and birth? Because wherever you put it, he's saying that is immortal. Mm -hmm. And this business is divine. Right. This business is divine. No wonder Zeus is so busy. Where would you put it? Well, Zeus is, you know, the breeding. Hey, Zeus if you is get the some, always breeding, you know. If you, if you get some uh, animals you're interested in breeding, wouldn't you want to go out and just get males? Mm -hmm. The Greeks would. Yeah. <laughs> no. So tell me what you think. Make fun of me. Go ahead. I'd get a chick named Mary and a uh, <laughs> grace of God, a miracle from God. And then... Oh, holy kind of holy immaculate breeding. conception. <laughs> holy breeding. See, what's he doing? What, come on, therefore, it's important to know what he's doing. I know. Shall we go back to our old principle? Okay, Rhonda. Yeah, <laughs> how can somebody get... How did he get... Oh, come on, come on. 
<laughs> Back table? What did they say? Tap it. Ask them. Go ahead. <clears throat> Pass the answers up. They're just trying to figure out how two men could have a baby. It doesn't work. I'm just contemplating all the Well, there's something. He's saying, this is divine, and it's immortal in human nature. Okay? All right. <clears throat> These cannot be in what is discordant, but ugly is discordant with everything divine, and beautiful is concordant. Beauty, therefore, is portioner and lady of labor at birth. <coughs> Therefore, when the pregnant comes near to a beautiful thing, it becomes gracious, being delighted, pour it out, begets, procreates. Uh, put in the letter numbers, please, in each one of these. See, when the pregnant, he's already pregnant, when it comes near to a beautiful thing, it becomes gracious, being delighted, right? It is poured out, begets, and procreates. It sounds like conception. Conception. Okay, okay. Well, the trouble with that is, at least, is that he's only near. <laughs> well, maybe he jumps to a conclusion. So I think it has to be... <laughs> Okay, look, it's going to get a little worse. Okay, look here. I'm skipping down one sentence. <coughs> Hence, <clears throat> in the pregnant thing, swelling full already, there's great agitation about the beautiful thing because he that has it gains relief from great agony. Now, that's foolish. Look at it, read it. Hence, in the pregnant thing, swelling full already, there's great agitation about the beautiful thing. Because he that has it gains relief from great agony. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, it looks like the... Yeah. If you're, if you're speaking of the reasoning process... Yeah. Uh, but he that has it, mm -hmm. would that be the beautiful? The beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, then he who has, who finally gets it, Ah, relief yes. from great agony. Yeah. Ah, so we have to add things here, right? Mm -hmm. At what point would you say there's great relief from previous great agony? Well, he, said, he says in the prior sentence, doesn't he, that when it comes near, right, when the pregnant things comes near to the beautiful, that um, it becomes gracious and being delighted, it is poured out. So it seems that it makes sense if you look at that and the con the contrast with the negative, which is that yeah. it can't pour out if it's near a negative, near an ugly thing. Yeah. And so it seems like it's already pregnant before it ever encounters the beautiful yes. thing. Yes, yes, already it's not pregnant. Only pregnant, but it's like it's already it's pregnant. Full, yeah, to the point of agony. Yeah, until it latches on to the beautiful. Yeah, and then it can pour forth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then she turns to Socrates, hey, you know, you were mistaken. It's not for, it's in. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that the, the force of it? Hey, see, if, if love for something, then it's servant, it's serving, right? Love for and love in, that's pretty direct and intimate, right? Mm -hmm. Participating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is for beginning and birth in the beautiful. Indeed, yeah. Why? For begetting. Because begetting is for the mortal. Now, remember, begetting, we need to put, we've got to find out which one of these talking about. Because begetting is for the mortal, something everlasting and immortal. Uh-oh, but, but one must desire immortality along with the good according to what we agreed, hmm, if love is love of having the good for oneself always, right? It has to be for immortality, right? Always. Right. It has to be connected then to immortality.
It is necessary then from this argument that love is for immortality also. Now she shifts, and it's a very curious word that comes up. We have to continue this. It's a very curious word. I have a lot of fun with it. Uh, this word. Cause. Hmm. That's a Greek word. Ideal. Ideal? No. It, it, alpha, Yoda, Tau. A-I-T-I-O-N. See, in here are two words. Love and desire. Right. It's a power. It's a desire. A special kind of desire called love. So she comes back and she says, hey, you know what? All this she taught me at different times. Whenever uh, we came to speak about love affairs, therefore it was an ongoing relationship. It wasn't just one talk, one session. Right? And all this she taught me at different times, whenever we came to speak about love affairs. And once she asked, what do you think, Socrates, to be the cause of uh, this love and desire? Okay, what are we going to get now? The cause of love and desire. Sitting back and saying, let's talk about the cause of all this. What do you think it is, Socrates? So she pulls back and she says, okay. What's the cause of all that? Hey, Socrates, you perceive that all animals get into a dreadful state when they desire to procreate. Indeed, birds and beasts alike, all are sick and in condition of love. About mating first, then, <laughs> how to find food for their young. And then they're ready to fight hard for them, weakest against the strongest. And to die for them and to suffer the agonies of starvation themselves in order to feed them, ready to do anything. One might perhaps think that man would do this from reasoning. But what about beasts? What is the cause of this enamored state? Can you tell me? And I said again that I didn't know. And she said, then how do you expect to become an expert in love affairs if you don't understand that, Socrates? <laughs> why, why do you team it? This is just why I've come to you, as I said. I, I knew indeed I, need, I needed a teacher. Pray, tell me the cause of this. And all the other lore as well. Throw everything in. <laughs> There's no dope. Right? You're so smart, you know it all. Come on. Is that what she's doing? What grade would you give Socrates so far? Is she giving him? So far, it looks happy. <laughs> See, he wasn't a bright kid. Except that he knows, he knows, he doesn't know, so he isn't in the worst condition of ignorance. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because I was thinking about the question you asked last time, which I have no clue about how to answer. No. You know, whether parts of Socrates' speech are ignorance, um, understanding, right opinion, understanding, and knowledge. Well, yeah, so that's important because remember with Agathon, Agathon quit. Quit. Yet he was following the same line of reasoning that Socrates traveled. Mm -hmm. So we can see at that point when he quit, what did Socrates do? He asked. Ask questions. Mm -hmm. So he's continuing to ask questions and therefore he's still pursuing this curious thing. Speaking reason. Right. Right.
Okay, what are we after? Cause. Cause. And we're going to get a curious answer. Hmm. Okay. Barbara, when was the last time you read? Well, if reading right now might oh. keep me. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Why don't you do it first? Just one sure. paragraph. Sure. Um, oh, well then? Yeah. Well then, if you believe love is by nature, love of that which we often agreed on, don't be surprised. For on the same principle as before, here mortal nature seeks always, as far as it can, to be immortal. And this is the only way it can, by birth because it leaves something young in place of the old. Consider that for a while each single living thing is said to live and to be the same. For example, a man is said to be the same from boyhood to old age. <clears throat> he has, however, by no means the same things in himself. Yet he is called the same. He continually becomes new, though he loses parts of himself hair and flesh and bones and blood and all the body. Indeed, not only body, even in soul, manners, opinions, desires, pleasures, pains, fears, none of these remains the same, but some perish and others are born. And far stranger still, this happens to knowledge, too. Not only do some kinds of knowledge perish in us, not only are other kinds born, and not even in our knowledge are we ever the same, but the same happens even in each single kind of knowledge. For what is called study and practice means that knowledge is passing out. Forgetting is knowledge leaving us, and study puts in new knowledge instead of that, instead of that which is passing away, and preserves our knowledge so that it seems to be the same. In this way, all the mortal is preserved not by being wholly the same always, like the divine, but because what grows old and goes leaves behind something new, like its past self. By this device, Socrates, mortality part partakes of immortality, both in body and in all other respects, but it cannot otherwise. Then do not be surprised that everything naturally honors its own offspring, Immortality is what all this earnestness and love pursues. Thank you. What's the conclusion? Immortality, immortality. is what the earnestness is and the pursuit Two of love. Love, love. And love pursues immortality. Oh. So, you, you <clears> have, what is the way men pursue it? And, no, and what see, activity, what actions? We started out with this issue, didn't we? Mm -hmm. What is the way men pursue it and what actions would their intense earnestness be expressed, etc. Mm -hmm. And this conclusion, she goes back and pulls this together, mm -hmm. doesn't she? She does. Therefore, that took us that long to get to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a key point because uh, <clears throat> this puzzles Socrates. So this puzzles him. And uh, I heard this with admiration. And I said, really, Diatema, most wives? Is that really and truly so? The answer is the complete sophist to and said, you may be sure of that, Socrates. Just think. And now comes a whole bunch of examples that we have to add, we have to look at with great care next time we meet. Mm. Because it's loaded, and you have to master this paragraph. And to the end. Right. Right. All right. And uh, you need to chart out this uh, combination. What's going on? <laughs> because it doesn't fit, unless we make some changes. Can you explain, can you explain the chart? 
to me because I don't understand the chart. Well, because obviously in this beautiful diagram, he's not pregnant. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the soul is not pregnant. Mm -hmm. See, uh, here it's pursuing beauty. And to make this diagram accurate, here he has to be in beauty by the beautiful. Yeah. As a consequence then, pregnant and something gives birth, has to give birth to it. But this level is saying, hey, no, 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 they're together. And, and this is not true, because he isn't pregnant until stage three. Here he's starting out with man, both body and soul are pregnant. Mm -hmm. So therefore we need a new model. And uh, I think what we need is, is a volunteer. And Ron, do you think uh, Julia should be the person to do it all? Perfect. <laughs> huh? I wouldn't, up, it, wouldn't upset it this side of the... No, no, no. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do it all? What all? Yeah, well, yeah, all this, yeah. yeah. Do it. Oh, figure out the next squares? I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Write a paper. Give it a Um, well... And if you need any help, of course, you know, uh, you can call on your colleagues in the first row. Okay. <laughs> but so. I doubt you'll need it. <laughs> Otherwise, Rhonda wouldn't recommend it. Um, well, so, yeah. Oh, I just want to show you I think Igmar is saying he'd like to get on your side. So, do you know what the next square would be? There'd be somebody in... Oh, no, I'm all for you doing the work. <laughs> You're not offering the help? Oh, I, I do. Wait a minute, no. what did you just say? He just took it on. He said he, he said, said yeah. it. <laughs> All right, that's it. No, I think should all do it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. I'll agree that he'll take it on and yeah. get it. Yeah. 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 Thank you. We'll try to have it ready for next week. Okay. Okay. And if you come in pregnant.